There was a study performed at the University of Barcelona in 2013 where subjects were put in VR headsets and equipped with devices on their wrists. In each of the different testing groups, their virtual arm would begin to turn either red, green, or blue. And as the color appeared and became more prevalent, the device on their arm would increase in temperature until the subjects felt pain. The researchers found that in most cases, those whose virtual arms turned red experienced pain first, despite the fact that their actual arm temperature was rising at the same rate as the green and blue groups. The color red itself lowered their pain threshold. It's no secret that we all associate colors with emotions, places, memories, sensations, and so on. Of course, in most cases, those connections are unique to each person based on their experiences. For me, gray may be a comforting shade, something that makes me think of rainy days and lazy afternoons. But for you, it could just be dull. It could mean dark storms or depression. There are as many subjective meanings for individual colors as there are people, but it's clear that in some cases, color associations and even physiological responses are deeply universal and human. From testing of skin conductance and heart rate to cognitive tasks, people are unquestionably affected by color in subtle ways. Color is emotion, and it's the dynamic use of color that takes Nomada Studios' grease and elevates the story it tells to a truly remarkable level. It's been argued that each segment of Greece represents one of the five stages of the Kubler-Ross model, better known as the five stages of grief. And each stage is painted with an appropriate shade to try and illustrate that emotion. Today on Psych of Play, we're going to unpack the psychology of the five stages of grief and how Greece uses color to communicate the delicate complexities of sorrow, loss, and coping. Here is your official warning. For major spoilers. Everyone has unique inherent associations to certain colors, there's no arguing that. However, that's not to say that a game can't create new associations in players by training them. Like I mentioned in an older video, the Mirror Temple in Celeste positions these yellow candles next to everything that is dangerous to teach you to associate yellow with fear and anxiety while leaving the blue candles in safer places. Games often use blue and orange contrast to show if something has been completed, and I don't think I need to tell you how much health you actually have left if I just say you're in the red. The opening scene here gets busy establishing those associations early on. Our protagonist Greece begins in a world rich with color, and as she sings, things are beautiful. The colors complement one another in an enchanting way, and it's lovely for a moment, until... Her world begins to crumble around her, and she falls into the clouds, the colors with her. We find Greece alone, on her knees, crumpled and defeated. The gorgeous palettes now associated with joy and music are gone. All we're left with is an empty white backdrop, now symbolic of devastation. And it's here she enters the first stage, denial. This stage is characterized by numbness, a refusal to accept reality. According to Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, denial is nature's way of managing shock by only allowing in as much as we can handle, which is beautifully illustrated in the first few moments of the game. As you move to the right and try to advance, the camera zooms out. The world becomes just a little bigger. Birds begin to fly by, a landscape forms. At first, she can only walk, but now she can run. And although there are no bright colors yet, Greece is beginning to let the world in, little by little. After Greece finds the crumbled hand from before, reality sets back in, and the next stage is triggered. Anger. In this stage, the red is strongly contrasted against the off-white backdrop and largely dominates the screen, exposing the player to vivid crimson structures. And like we established earlier, red is typically associated with pain in most people, which may explain why game devs typically make low health bars red. 
The color choice here is fitting, since anger is almost always stirred up from some form of mental or physical anguish. Prolonged exposure to red also increases your heart rate, according to a 2015 study published in Color Research and Application. Anger makes your blood boil, and by using red visuals here, the player subtly begins to emulate that body chemistry. But even with some of the inherent physiological effects of red, Nomada Studio still helps build your association with red in the context of the game by pairing it with fitting mechanics. There's this stretch of the environment where a sandstorm will continually blow in and wash the screen in dark maroon and vermilion shades. It knocks Grease back unless she hides from it, almost symbolizing the idea that her anger is too strong to bear. The screen being bathed in red is reminiscent of a blinding rage. To combat this, you'll find a new ability that allows Grease to become heavier and weather the storm. This ability also allows Grease to smash the ground below her. At the bottom of this pit, you'll find that you sort of have to make Grease throw a little temper tantrum to escape and smash the floor over and over, which is fitting. Researchers and health professionals agree that it's healthy to let the anger out during grieving. However, you can see that every time she slams the floor, her reflection reacts in a sinister way, foreshadowing something greater. With this new smashing mechanic in mind, you'll use it to solve puzzles in the last stretch of the red section without thinking twice. But there is this quiet little moment later on when you have to smash this moving rock to advance, and out pops this little robot who was living in that rock. He scampers off, Grease walks after him, and he is afraid of her. Her anger is hurting others. This displaced aggression is a common part of the second stage, and realizing that you are lashing out is a huge step in moving on. Once Grease finds the crumbled statue again, green spills onto the canvas. The third stage, bargaining. Green is a lower wavelength than red, and is much easier on the eyes. It's typically associated with life, nature, and growth. And I think it's chosen to represent bargaining here because bargaining feels like an actionable stage, which is reassuring. It's characterized by a need to strike a deal in order to undo the feelings of loss, a need to reach out to God or others for help. This is reflected by Grease's encounter with the little forest creature, who is initially timid around Grease. But when she accidentally knocks loose this apple from a tree, he suddenly has a snack, and a relationship is formed. From this point on, you'll help him find some more apples, solve some puzzles together, and guide him home to his family, who in return will provide a star that you need to move on. It's a touching moment. However, as you move on throughout the level, you'll notice that green is not always the dominant color here. Pinks and crimsons are still very potent. From an aesthetic standpoint, yes, the red and green shades complement each other nicely for some gorgeous visuals, but I'd contend that this is more than just an artistic choice, it's still connected to the five stages. Throughout the level, there are these green trees that swap on a timer. They change shape independent of your actions. However, there are also red trees that only change shapes when you jump. Grease controls them. To me, the green trees represent the actions of others, and the red trees represent your own actions. Consequently, this section is a display of Grease learning to manage her anger, and understanding what she does and doesn't have control over. This is the first example of what I so dearly love about this game. It doesn't abandon the colors from previous sections when you move on to another stage of grief. Because when you truly move on to another stage in real life, you don't abandon the emotions from the previous stages. The colors and emotions are still around, lying quietly in the background. Toward the end of Grease's first experience with bargaining, she encounters what appears to be a manifestation of her dark side, which was unleashed in her temper tantrum during the anger stage. And I feel that it appears here specifically because the bargaining has not worked. She has failed to end her grieving. 
The color black is often used in cinema to communicate that this is the villain, and this is likely done because most people associate the color with evil, sinister intent, and peril. Perhaps because our ancestors felt the most fear of predators in the dark. It's clear that in this encounter, the reality has set back in, and Grease feels like she cannot escape her fear of that reality. As the confrontation escalates, the green becomes less prominent, and before long, red overcomes the screen. Her anger is overcoming her again as she tries to fight off these terrifying thoughts. And it's only by using the bells that she can push away this creature. Music numbs the pain and settles her down. After her run-in with her darker self, Grease finds the statue again. Lost about what to do next, she cries and draws forth a cascade of blue. Depression. The color blue carries a much shorter wavelength than red or even green, and therefore will come off as a huge relief to the eyes at this moment. Blue is sometimes associated with water, a cleanse, cooler temperatures, and so on. It's often described as a relaxing hue, and in the same 2015 study from earlier, participants reported feelings of calmness and serenity when presented with blue as opposed to other colors. However, scores in cognitive tests such as reading did decline in prolonged exposure to blue light compared to warmer, more vivid colors. In fact, in 2005, city officials in Nara, Japan set up blue streetlights in certain areas and found that the number of crimes and suicides decreased by around 9% in those neighborhoods. There are mixed results in psych research to explain this, but it's clear that blue light does influence our energy level and impulsivity to some degree. So, why would such a comforting color be used to illustrate depression? Well, depression often feels like giving up, like there is no hope, no energy, yet there is a small peace in finally not driving yourself mad to change things. At least, initially. At first, it can feel free to run from reality, and this is portrayed in Grease's new ability to swim. This swimming animation is the fastest you've been able to move all game, and it gives you the power to explore the deep chasms of this cave effortlessly, which subsequently allows for the underwater caverns to be expansive. Much like depression, the deeper you travel into it, the harder it is to find an escape. Of course, color is still used dynamically in this stage of the game. Much like the red chapter earlier, shades of blue wash out the foreground because, like anger, depression is an overwhelming feeling, despite the other emotions that may be inhabiting the background. Nomada continues to reinforce the conditioning from earlier as well by placing red stems, red spills, and red leaves where you'll need to use Reese's smash ability. Redfish and green shrubbery are peppered into the caverns, but do not occupy a dominant role because, although present, these emotions are often washed out in a depression. Guided by a red turtle, which perhaps represents Grease's anger towards her own sadness, she is able to go deeper into the caverns until she escapes and finds herself right back where she started, as often is the case when we move on from a depression. And after realizing that there is no more point in running, she begins to see shades of yellow. Acceptance. The creamy yellow moon behind her illuminates the sky and fills the screen. Finally ready to at least try to face reality, she attempts to sing once again. And although she is unable to, trying alone is a huge step towards true acceptance. But it's only a step, and true acceptance doesn't happen all at once. It comes in bits and pieces. Chased back into her depression, Grease runs from the creature until she finds herself enveloped in total darkness. Then her path is lit by small yellow lights. 
The color yellow has a higher wavelength like red, a warmer color that has also been shown to increase heart rate and attentiveness. It's typically used to convey cheerful and joyous emotion, but also caution, which is fitting here as it faintly guides Greece back into the light, back towards her way to acceptance. And I think this choice beautifully illustrates this stage because acceptance is a slow, deliberate process. It's a few drops of paint here and there, not a splash. Not yet. This stretch of the cavern is scary, as often the idea of trying to return to normal after a loss can be. After all, reality hasn't changed. It's still unfriendly. Attacked by her dark thoughts again, Grease swims away in panic. She draws closer and closer to being consumed by her dread. You can feel all hope slipping away. And then... The red turtle from before, Grease's anger, returns to save her from the creature. She refuses to be controlled by her fear anymore, and in her rage, she pushes it down and swims to safety. It's a triumphant moment, and it once again illustrates that the five stages of grief don't necessarily go in order. There are detours and bumps in the road. Greece offers a realistic perspective on the fifth stage. Acceptance is not just a moment that will happen one day and magically make everything all right. It's a subtle, scary process that involves slowly finding your way back to normal. It'll involve navigating all of your emotions and remembering every lesson you've learned along your journey to find that peace again. And once Grease climbs her way out of the cavern and ascends into the city in the sky, this is exactly what she must do. Yellow butterflies, lanterns, and fireflies illuminate a path for Grease that is previously unseen. Again, the gold and daisy shades represent a path, a way back to normal. And although her anger is required and even prompted in some moments to progress, it is only welcome when the time is right. The ground smash will scare away the firefly that illuminates hidden structures, but when well timed, it is used to solve this puzzle. Later, you'll use the swimming ability in conjunction with the red butterflies from the bargaining chapter to reveal a new path. After freeing the spider and the two beetles, Grease is able to continue, again echoing what the forest creature has taught her about reaching out to others. And fittingly, each encounter is accented by green. Throughout this stage, you get these lovely stretches where Grease uses what she has gathered on her journey to explore the upside down portion of the city confidently. For the first time, we are seeing all of the colors working together, complementing each other for Grease's well-being. When we experience a loss, it often feels like our world has turned upside down, and I think this level takes a literal interpretation of this by slowly granting Greece the capability and courage to navigate what may be her new reality. Her voice returns to her, she is able to interact with others, and eventually, her world turns back right side up. Everything has changed, but now she can cope with those changes and try to move on. As she falls, the full moon envelops the screen and acceptance has arrived. However, even when things seem to return to normal, dark thoughts will always linger. Only now, there is no more running. It's time to confront them. The name of our protagonist, Greece, is the Spanish word for gray, the halfway point between black and white. And this Spanish translation is no coincidence, as Nomada Studios is based in Barcelona, Spain, with several of its members native Spanish speakers. When the creature returns, it consumes all of the colors Greece has gathered, which is also no coincidence. Black is, in fact, the result of combining all of the colors of paints, dyes, or pigments. This is known as subtractive mixing. Conversely, when the light of all the colors is added together, it creates white through additive mixing. 
In both cases, all of the colors are present, but canceling each other out. White is used early on to convey denial, so many feelings and so many colors that there are none visible. Black is later associated with chaos, emotions running rampant, and untamable. The girl in the story is gray because she houses both the calm and the storm. And when she finally accepts that there is no more running from her fear and decides to sing in spite of its presence, it's only then that the colors trapped inside can work together, complement one another, and return beauty to her world. The Kubler-Ross model is not without its criticisms amongst psychologists, namely because it implies that there is a correct way to deal with loss. Five stages puts a nice bow on things, but how people grieve is rarely that simple. Although Greece arguably tells a story about these stages, it does a tremendous job of painting it in an authentically messy light. Stages don't always go in order, nor is transitioning between them easy or even a one-way road. It's a frightening journey that takes continued effort to finish. Whether or not you've ever personally endured loss or bereavement, Greece offers an experience that is unpatronizing and unapologetic. It paints a picture of grief that is relatable on a level not previously seen in a game and does so with grace and respect to the subject. All thanks to its music, its design, and in no small part, to its colors. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for watching this video. I hope that you were entertained, that you learned something, and then if you are going through a tough time right now, that this helped you in some way. My videos are made possible thanks to everyone who watches, shares, and likes my videos, my subscribers, and my loyal Patreon supporters. If you'd like to have your name in the credits of my future videos or access to monthly bonus content, feel free to come and join me on Patreon. Thanks again for watching, take care of yourself, and have a damn good one.